There's a lot of characters in CK3, but luckily Paradox has put together what I like to call the starter characters, which is where they think you'll have the most fun playing the game. Today, I played absolutely every single one because I'm clinically insane, and we're gonna find out who you should play, and maybe, oh, this fucking game who you should avoid. So, how on earth are we going to do this? Well, like I said, we're doing a tournament. No boring tier list today, boys. Each ruler goes in a bracket. They'll face off with another ruler. From there, I will give my very personal opinion, and the winner will go through to phase- yeah, You know what, you guys know how a tournament works, okay? This is- this is stupid. So who's up first? Well, it's William the Bastard and King Sven. Who the hell? is gonna come out on top. Normandy, obviously. I feel like this one's a, like a no-brainer. You know, William, he's like, uh, he's like the bread and butter. Everyone's played him. Does that subjectively make him better? Yes. Yes, it does. Look, there's nothing wrong with Denmark. They're fine. Also, when I was playing King Sven, he had a stroke, so that probably dampens my opinion of him a bit. But this round, without a doubt, goes to William. So next up, we have Duke Robert and Infanta Uraka. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest, these guys both absolutely honk. And Infanta Uraka is possibly one of the worst starting rulers. She also starts with some fairly questionable relations. Duke Robert is, he's fine, but he's just worse than his competition, which I'll get to later. So I, I guess Duke Robert wins this round, but you know, how could he not? And next we got King Malcolm and King Garcia. Now I'm going to be completely honest i'm not a big fan of iberia especially the three brothers they kind of just play the same none of them are great but king garcia out of all of them is definitely the worst this motherfucker has zero intrigue zero but that's why this guy dies like instantly he, he is useless king malcolm on the other hand yeah yeah he's all right he's a bit of a sadistic prick i had fun with malcolm king garcia was pretty shit and then we got these Boys, King Harold Godwinson and King Sancho II. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an easy clap. Harold Godwinson any day of the week. King Harold Godwinson is fun. He, he's one of the first ones we've had where it's actually fun to play him. He starts off getting pummeled. You know, you've got Norway and you've got Normandy up your bum. You have to find a way around that and it's fun. He wins, he wins this round easily. I honestly, I don't have much to say about Castile. It's, you know, out of, out of the three brothers, probably one of the better, one of the better ones. But these three guys, I just find them kind of boring. But you know what I find even more boring? The fact you've made it so far into this video without subscribing. I mean, that's Okay, so next up, we've got uh, Amir Yaya and King Brian of Munster. Look, Munster's fun. It's nice and simple. You start off small and you have a nice little goal of conquering Ireland. And if you're starting out CK3, I absolutely recommend this character. This is the guy that I think most of us started playing the game as. But if you've played this guy before, you're not really going to want to play him again. Ireland is one of those playthroughs where it's once you've done it once, it, it, it kind of loses the appeal. On the other hand, Amir Yaya. Yeah, yeah. I love this guy. He just has a good start. He's one of the only Spanish rulers that I actually enjoyed playing. Uh, so he definitely takes this round. Now we've got these two little schmucks here. These guys both pissed me off. But I'm going to give the round to Navarro. And that is simply because he, I just had more fun with him. And, until a, uh, a rather unfortunate ending. France, please help a brother out here, man. Fuck! Why are you down here? Why do I even fucking play this game? This game is fucking dog sh- Okay, if you play any of these guys, you're probably gonna have a good game. But, we can do better than that. Okay, so we've got Malcolm and Robert. Scotland, quite a fun start. You've got England to go up against, which could be one of three rulers. Like I said before, if you're playing as Malcolm, you are gonna be a bit of a twisted psycho. But sometimes that's fun, you know? As for Robert, you start at the ripe age of 51, which in the Middle Ages, you haven't got long left. However, on the plus side, you do start with a nice set of skills. So I'll give him that. You are a bit limited in terms of where you can expand especially if you want to form italy because you've got the hre on your doorstep my tactic was just joining the hre and then nibbling away at it from the inside like a parasite but that you know you can do whatever the fuck you want to be honest maybe it's just because i didn't have a particularly exciting game with robert i think malcolm takes this round across the other side we have my boy amir and another ruler that i enjoy quite a lot William the Bastard. And I've just got to say, my opinion on this, 
is very controversial. I prefer the Mir. I've just got to say it. William the Bastard is like, you know exactly what you're getting into. It's really easy to take England. And then from there, it's just like boring. You sort out your duchies, you give your kids your land. There's not much variation. However, my boy Amir, he's just fun. He's just, what can I say? He's fun. You have loads of land to conquer. You know, you can make the most of Iberian struggle game mechanics. So I'm going to give this round to Amir. Now, we've got the wild card. We have Harold Godwinson versus Queen Matilda. Now these two are both fantastic rulers. Harold Godwinson has a very difficult start because he's against not only William the Conqueror but this angry Norwegian man as well. However, once you're past that, you don't get much to him. Unlike the other English rulers, Harold Godwinson doesn't have land elsewhere. So as soon as you're done with this war, that's it. It's just the UK, isn't it? Whereas with Matilda, she doesn't start off at war. However, her start is just one of the best. There are so many options, and even though you start under the Holy Roman Empire, you can still expand in so many directions. I ended up taking Rome, and because of that, she just has an edge over Harold Godwinson and definitely takes this round. And now, Navarra versus Harold Hadrada. This one isn't difficult in the slightest. Okay, Harold Hadrada completely smacks Navarra out of the water with this. But, but, um, Lord Hassey, uh, sorry to interrupt. Um, isn't that just because you're salty that you lost as Navarra? What? Why are you here? Who, who let you in? No, it's, it's just, you know, just seems like you're a bit angry and I might alter your opinion. L literally, who are you? How do you get into my house? Navarra loses. End of. Look where we are, boys. We're at the semi-finals. Already. And who else better to start with but King Malcolm and Queen Matilda? Look, King Malcolm's okay, but he just does not stand up against Matilda. You know, you can only play Scotland so much before it gets boring. Whereas Matilda, you're gonna have fun. This is not a difficult lineup at all. Matilda wins this easily. That was a pretty easy lineup. Unlike the next one, we have my boy, Amir Yaya and Harold Hadrada. I mean, do the lineups even get any better? Apart from the final, that will be better. Please stay tuned. But I mean, holy moly, these are two good rulers. I've already gone through what makes these rulers great. So unfortunately, there's not too much more to say about them. And sadly, it's with a heavy heart, we're gonna be waving goodbye to Amir Yaya. I know, I know. As tragic as it is, while, while I love Amir and I did have a good time playing as him, Harold Hadrada just objectively has a better start. He's more fun to play, you get more land quickly, and you get to beat the living shit out of these two schmucks. Ladies and gentlemen, I can barely contain my excitement. We have arrived at the finals. We're gonna break down these two rulers, what makes them great and what makes them shit. And in the end, there will be a winner. Ladies first. Let's start with Matilda. Now on the surface, she isn't even that great of a ruler. You don't have a big claim on another kingdom where you can instantly gain a load of land and you don't have that initial excitement that Harold Hadrada does. She also starts as a subject of the HRE, so you're not independent. This is probably the worst thing about her start because it all gets better from here. While you don't have any great claims to begin with, you do have a good amount of land and it's all stable. You're not in any wars, so you have freedom to expand as you want. But then there's the competition. So, what is so good about Harold Hadrada? Well, unlike Matilda, he starts off at war and with the claim of the Kingdom of England. Your first few years playing as Harold Hadrada are going to be spent fighting a bloody war against not only Harold Godwinson, but William the Bastard, who, by the way, I'm convinced has some kind of hacks. If you come out on top, you will have not only Norway, but you will also have all of England and you will be one of the most powerful players in Europe. However, there are two big negatives for Harold. After conquering England, I genuinely didn't find it that fun to play as him. I don't know why, maybe it was coming off the high of winning England, but I was kind of lost with what to do. So I was kind of just stuck sitting on my ass in London. And the second negative, which I didn't experience too much because I only played the starting ruler, but the inheritance is actually foul. You will lose either England or Norway. And when you play your heir, you're gonna have to get that land back. So just worth having in your mind. So what is my final verdict? Who do I truly believe is the best star in CK3? Well, after a long time pondering, I've come to the conclusion that it is, in fact, 
Queen Matilda. When it comes to flexibility in ruling your kingdom and in where you want to go in your start, there is truly no one better than Queen Matilda in this game. But Harold Hadrada was a close second for me. But anyway guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you might also enjoy some of my other CK3 stuff. Or you might enjoy this random video right here. I don't know what this is going to be, so this is, a, this is a complete wild card. This one could be awful. I could be recommending an awful video right now. And you could be clicking it. What a what an awful decision you just made. Thanks for watching. Bye.